Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is video two of uh, the video button. And what you guys are going to want to do, of course, uh, for this particular video, is to come along here and go to my Google code at uh, code.google.com forward slash p forward slash lv3d downloads list and download the video button right here. And that has all the resources that you need to get started. So let's take a look at those resources and let's bring up Flash Catalyst. So we're in the resources right here, and what you're going to see here is Rotate 3D 3rd. <laughs> that was my third iteration of this. And go ahead and let's open that up in Flash Catalyst. So you can just right-click on it and go Open With. And choose Flash Catalyst. Now, that doesn't work. Just open up Flash Catalyst and open it from there. Now, of course, if you don't have Flash Catalyst, just go to the Adobe website and download it. It's in the beta, and it's actually free right now. So we're in Flash Catalyst right now, and I want to say that I really love the concept of Flash Catalyst. I mean, it's still in beta, and they've got a long ways to go with it, but it's, it's an incredible concept. It's an idea of actually auto-generating code through drag and drop techniques, but then again, giving the developer uh, access to that code to work with it and manipulate it. And so this is what I've built so far. I'm going to run this in Flash Catalyst. So let me show you how to run a program that's built in Flash Catalyst. All you have to do is go to File, Run Project, or Control-Enter. Hit that. And that will run your project. So you can actually see it in Flash Catalyst. You can actually actually bundle it from Flash Catalyst right onto the web. That's not what we're going to do in this case, of course. And so here's our project. It's just brought in an image, and you roll over, it highlights, and there you get your little uh, uh, tooltip, and you click, and it spins. And you don't see anything. You just see a blank screen. And what I've done actually here is I've created a place for component. That's where our video is going to go. So after we import this into Flash Builder, we're going to put a video in that holder. And click again, and you're back. So it's probably one of the simplest interactions I could think of in Flash Catalyst, but it actually illustrates the powerful process of how to put everything together just with the clicks. Now let me show you where the code is. Code has been generated for all of this, so let me come over here. And right here you're going to take a look at this design view right here. So if you click on design view, you have the, the option of design or code. I'm going to click on code. And so as I drag and drop it, it created all this code for me. And here's on this side is my little project navigator. This is actually it will go exactly into Flash Builder. So this is set up just like Flash Builder. There's our SRC folder. And here's our assets uh, with all the images that we used. And here's our components. And we generate quite a few components. So there's our component sets right there. And that's what I'm very much interested in. And the way I've set this up is certain things sit in certain components. Like I believe component four is your video component. And component one, that's the component that you can actually bring into a carousel or a panel that you can move around all over the place. Now, if you click on these different uh, items, you actually get the code for that item. Let me squeeze this in so you can see everything. There we go. And let me just click on component one so that'll come up to the screen. And I can actually examine that. I'm going to expand this just a little bit. There we go. And uh, basically, uh, let me go to the main right there. There we're at main. So this is the main application. This is what we'll run in Flash Builder. And you can see here's my component one. Nothing is there except component one. It's exactly what I want. That's why I nest a component inside of component. So that code will be on the lower level. And I want that because I want to take this component and be able to manipulate it without not worry about carrying its code with it, having its code internalized to that component. When I click on component one, there's that initial code right there. So that's the initial control code that takes me from state one to state two, or state two to state one, depending on what I'm in. And component two, you can see it's right there. What's in component two? Uh, just basically nesting of my other two components and actually my states. Now, you're going to want to familiarize yourself with code like this, specifically stuff like this. So you can come along here and start programming and adding states automatically. It's so easy. You can just go into Flash Builder, hit state one, state two, throw this code in there, and then you can uh, pretty much just create your own states and put whatever, what you, and put whatever you want in those states. Very important. So what Flash Cat is going to enable you to do, not only look at code, but begin to write code like that, which is in a sense is in the Adobe uh, framework, and that's very important. Let's go to the next one. And you can see component three. Uh, this is basically just my thumbnail image. There's my bitmap image, and here's my hover up and over. And then in four, that's just a generic component. It's just sitting there waiting for you to put something in it. So when I bring that into Flash Builder, uh, I'm going to actually put the video into that, and we'll show you that to you in a moment. Let's go back to design view and show you how this was built up, and then we'll be done with this project today. So here's design view. The first thing I did was I imported an image. So go back and view video one. Shows you how to import the image, and I brought it in. I turned it into a component, and so I double click on that, and below that is yet another component. You see that? And then I'm gonna double click on that, and below that is yet 
another component. And there's my two states, state one and state two. And in state two, you can see I have this blank, another component. Now, how did I make that component? Well, the thing I did is I came along here and I just drew uh, something from the draw menu. I right clicked on that and I turned it into a component. They bring that up so you can see it. So I just right clicked on it and I turned it into a component. Now the great thing about that is I now have a generic holder that can be used to put anything in it. So when I bring that into Flash Builder, all I have to do is boop, throw whatever component I want in there. Let's take a look at the code that was all generated for each one of these uh, states. So let's go back one, initial component. And this is where I essentially added all my interactions. Let's go down one. And here's our timeline right here. So what I want to do, I'm going to go from state one to two. Let's see what happens when I run that. I have a flip, and then I have a fade in. So here's my fade in right here. You see that? And I can move that to wherever I want to. So if I put that at the beginning, for example, you see you immediately get the fade in at the beginning. If I move that fade in slider over here, then you get the fade in at the end. And that's kind of what you want. But I want to overlap just a little bit, so I bring that in just a little bit. That's all there is to it. Go back and review the first video. showed you how to make the rotate 1, rotate 2. And all I did was create this component, once again, this this uh, by dragging and, and right-clicking and turning it into a uh, custom component. And then what I did is, it's there right there. See how that appeared? Then I can fade that in wherever I want to. Run that. Fades in. So uh, I don't actually want that. So let's get rid of that. I'm going to delete that. And that goes away. And so that's the from state 1 to 2. Basically, it's just a rotate. We, we looked at that the, in the first video. And a uh, rotate uh, 3D and just a fade in of a component. Very simple. And then I want to make sure I go the other way. Once again, emphasize 1 to 2 is not the same as 2 to 1. So don't get messed up on that. And what I want to do now is a fade out. And then I want to rotate back. So I just run that. Fades out and rotates back. That's all there was to it. And uh, all that code, when you go back to the uh, design view, when you go from design to code view, basically it was generated for me automatically. And let's take a look at that code so we understand what's going on. Basically, there's this wonderful thing in uh, Adobe called Transitions. So there's, one, there's this wonderful thing called Transitions in Do Adobe. And uh, you don't even have to worry about matrix multiplication or anything. It's all done for you automatically. And so when I go from state 1 to state 2, all these transitions occur. And what I'm doing is my ro here's my rotate right here. All right, see that? And here's my, uh, my two rotates. Now, notice this is happening in parallel. So what that means is is that you actually have these phenomena occurring you know, together. And here's my fade right here. So my two rotates and my fade. And when you go from 2 to 1, right here, you have your fade out, and then you have your rotates. And so it goes in the opposite direction. Here you went to 90, you get a minus 90. Here you go from 0 to 180, and here you go from 180 to 0. So it's pretty cool stuff. Um, and it, it takes some getting used to it. And actually, you need to learn how to write this stuff from scratch. And, and the way you learn to do that is just by examining the code. So that's really all there is to it. That's what I built up in Adobe. Uh, it, that's what I built up in Flash Catalyst. And you know what? Not one single line of code has been written here. And let's run this project one more time. Roll over. And then roll back. And so not one single line of code has been written here. It's all been done for you automatically. Now let's just take one more look at this tooltip and see how I did that. I mean, it's just so simple, you're probably scratching your head. I mean, this looks pretty simple. It really is. And so what I want to do is just basically take a look and see how we did the tooltip. And I want a tooltip occur, so that's in that component. And so in this component, I double-clicked, and so I just create a component inside a component. I create two states, an up and a hover state. And so when I hover, I just basically came, dragged a tool, uh, dragged text box over here created a name and dragged a box under it and I just put it in there so whenever I'm in the hover state I uh, get that tag and when I'm not I don't but what about the fade in so I was able to come in here and hit fade in now there's a nice little button down here let me show it to you in this menu if you hit smooth transitions it'll automatically create these fade in transitions once they're created then you can drag or drop them and put them wherever you want you can actually uh, stagger them as well but I just put them both together because I wanted everything to fade in and there's that fading in tooltip very easy and once again that's all done code wise uh, inside uh, Flash Catalyst so what we're going to do next is actually bring this into Flash Builder 
and actually put that video player in there and show you how easy it is to work with this code.